Today's video was sponsored by Webroot. Does this look familiar to you? This is the Acer Concept D7 Easel. It's very similar to the smaller cousin, the Easel 3, I reviewed earlier this year, but, but this time they nailed it. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals, and I've been searching for the ultimate Windows art laptop all in one for years. So many come close, but there is always like one or two things that hold it back for me. For the Easel 3, it was the pen. It used Wacom's AES, and Wacom has multiple versions of their pen tech, and that's the kind that's uh, not good. It gives you a really shaky line, so even though I love the form factor and the screen and the way it folds it over the pen killed it for me but with the concept d7 easel the higher end version of this computer we get a wacom emr pen now if you're not familiar with wacom tech that's the good stuff so we get the same cool form factor with a great pen nice there is one catch this thing is a beast and it has a pretty big price tag to go along with it so Let's take a look at what's under the hood. Before I get too far in, I want to thank today's sponsor, Webroot. Webroot protects you against ransomware, phishing, viruses, identity theft, and other digital dangers. They were ranked 2020's best antivirus software by US News. And their cloud-based threat intelligence platform proactively protects devices against the latest cyber crimes, including malware and ransomware. It's powerful, it's lightweight, and it's integrated protection for people PCs, Macs, and smartphones. Let's talk about some of the special features that they've packed in here. Things like anti-phishing, password management, mobile security, webcam protection, a system optimizer, and automatic backups and secure online storage. It's fully cloud-based and faster than its competitors. The software can scan billions of apps, files, and websites continuously to determine where and what is safe for you online. Since it is 100% cloud-based, that means that Webroot does a lot of that heavy lifting in the cloud before the threats even reach your devices. And it can efficiently scan your computer for viruses and malware in seconds using almost no storage locally, thanks to that cloud-based architecture. In 2020, Passmark Software conducted an objective performance testing of 12 antivirus products using 15 performance metrics spanning things like speed and efficiency and size. Webroot came out on top by a wide margin against all of those competitor brands. For a limited time only, Webroot is providing a holiday promotion and you can get 50% off right now by purchasing this software through webroot.com using the link I have provided in the description below. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. They're offering a 70 day, no questions asked, money back guarantee. So go ahead, check that link down below in the description. This is for a limited time only. So you need to get on this now and protect up to five devices for a full year. This version of the Concept D is a real pro machine. It holds nothing back. You have a 10th gen Intel Core i7 six core processor. You've got a GeForce RTX 2070 with six gigabytes of RAM. Also in the base model, you get a one terabyte SSD drive. Those specs look nice, but the thing is, is those specs are like the base level. You can get a full Xeon processor in here. You can give it more memory than Neil deGrasse Tyson. With the Easel 3, the compromises you were making were with the screen, but here we get a full 4K screen, which looks really good. It's Pantone calibrated. It boasts super accurate colors and has 350 nits of brightness. Since this is designed to be drawn on, it does have a matte finish over the screen. This does dull the colors a little bit, but not too much. So if you're a photographer who likes those super rich blacks and those super popping whites, this might not be the right device for you. You might want to settle for a more traditional laptop with a glossy screen on it. But for art and illustration, this is a really good compromise because you're just getting that slight matte texture, which gives you enough drawing resistance and control, and you're not going to get a lot of glare while you're adjusting the screen and putting it at different angles. There's a good selection of ports along the side as well. Side one, we have a power port. You get a 10 gigabyte ethernet port, a USB type A port, an HDMI port, and also some kind of display port. I've never actually seen one of these in a while. Along the front by the power light, there's also an SD card slot. Let's check out the other side. We have another USB type A, two USB-C Thunderbolts, a headphone jack, and the power button. That power button also doubles as a fingerprint reader. Now along the base of the screen near the back is where the pen is stored. Keep saying this, but this is a really powerful laptop. Cool, who doesn't want that? That does come with some trade-offs. The first is size, this is a big boy, and it is heavy. 
5.6 pounds. It may be called the laptop, but you're not gonna want it on your lap all day. Also, a more powerful processor also means more heat, hence the vents. There are a lot of vents on this thing. And one of the downsides here is those fans make a good amount of noise. It is not a quiet laptop. For me personally, I felt the fan noise was a little bit too much. I don't like to wear headphones all day. I like to use the speakers that are in the computer. The speakers are pretty good, but with the fan going quite a bit when I was doing my work, it was very noticeable. I think what it's doing is it runs the fans a lot because this doesn't get super hot. At least it wasn't getting super hot while I was using it. So I think it's just forcing a ton of air in and pulling a lot of air out, specifically to keep the heat down, which means it can keep itself throttled up working at a higher end for longer stretches of time. This is just how thermal throttling works and fans work and all that fun stuff. It's, it's a trade-off. You want that kind of power, you want it to last long, you gotta have fans. Another cool feature is along the hinge, there are these little feet. And what those do is they push the back of the laptop off your desk, which gives it even more airflow underneath. The other hit that powerful laptops take is in battery life. You got a 4K screen, that's gonna pull on the battery. You've got a big processor, that's gonna pull on the battery. The GPU, that's gonna pull on the battery. The fans, they're spinning, they're running that's gonna pull on the battery. I'm getting a little over two hours when I'm using this with Photoshop or Premiere, some, some really kind of resource intensive programs running. Oftentimes in these reviews, I say, hey, I know that I use a lot of resource intensive programs, but that, that's really the purpose of this laptop. So I don't think you should really expect to get all day battery life or anywhere near all day battery life with this. Chances are is if you're buying this particular device, you're getting it for that power. So you should expect to be keeping it plugged plugged in most of the time. Maybe if you're using less intensive drawing programs, you could get like three, maybe four hours out of it if you're running something like Clip Studio or Krita, something like that. Let's talk about the design of this thing. If you've been here for a while, you know that I am a big fan of minimalist design. I chose my next generation console based on how cool I thought it looked. I don't care what everybody says. The low end Xbox, that is hot. This laptop is not a minimalist design. You got the big vents, there's lots of ports, there's different angles. It doesn't look bad. And there are some very practical benefits to having a more audacious design. And those benefits are usually performance and airflow and that sort of thing. A lot of you are probably watching this thinking, hey, that looks a lot better than those Surface devices you're always drooling over, Brad. So it's probably just a matter of personal preference. In many ways, the design of this thing reminds me more of a gaming computer. I do like the eggshell white color. I think it looks better in person than it does in the pictures. There's also this like subtle orange backlight underneath the keyboard that looks really, really cool. That's something that's really hard to pick up on camera, but when you see it in real, li in real life, it's, it's pretty slick. Okay, but the big design feature that you're all waiting for me to talk about here is that secondary hinge that it lets you pivot the screen at different angles and use it for drawing. You can use it in straight up laptop mode. You can pull the screen forward into like a drawing mode. You can spit it all the way around into a presentation mode or just flatten it out and use it in like a tablet mode. The hinge is really solid. It's not super tight, so it's easy to like pull out and kind of get into the position that you want it to. When you're using it in laptop mode, as you pull the screen kind of forward, it snaps into that position really well. So it's not gonna get all loosey on you if you just want to use it as a laptop. But once you get it out of that main position, it's more free flowing and it's easy to prop up. Now, now the thing that I really liked about it was that because of the way the hinge is like on a 45 degree angle or, or slightly lower when I had it in drawing mode is that my palm could rest against it and I didn't have to worry about it flattening out. This is something that happens a lot with pretty much everything. I mentioned the Surface products earlier. The Surface Pro's got a really tight hinge on it, but if you apply too much pressure, you're slowly gonna notice that thing sinking down. Because of the way that back hinge is like pivoted against the screen, it holds up really well. This is like really thoughtful design in terms of how an artist actually would use it. The other thing about that drawing mode is it leaves your keys fairly accessible. Many times when you get these like 360 degree laptops, what you're doing is you're, you're flipping the whole screen around and you're placing it down, which means your keyboard and your keyboard shortcuts are like facing your desk and then you've got the drawing surface. Whereas here, you're pulling it forward so your keys are right there. So if you need to reach something, like not all your keys are accessible. It is blocking some of your keys, but you know, Command Z, really easy to get to, or if you wanna like change your brush size or something with a keyboard shortcut, it's really easy to just lift that screen a tiny bit and get under there, 
to your keys. They're just so much more accessible than many other laptop designs I've seen. The other way I often draw is in tablet mode. And here it's a bit cumbersome just because of that weight. You can set this up and prop it up on your lap so you can recline on a couch and draw or while you're watching TV. But because of the weight of this thing, there are just better options out there for this particular use case. If you see yourself mostly using it for just around the house use, I think it's it's probably too heavy. I think there's better options out there for that. But it's kind of like a bonus when you're not at your desk but want to use it as a drawing tablet, kind of out and about. It's nice to have. Let's talk about this pen. There's a pen included here. That's the one that tucks around the back. Now it is one of those smaller pen. This has its pluses and its minuses. The pluses is that it's always with you. It's hard to lose. It fits right into the laptop. The minuses is that this stylus is small, so it's not fun to hold for an extended period of time. Since I do find it uncomfortable to use for extended period of time, I'm looking for alternatives. The good news here is many of Wacom's other pens, not the ones that come with Wacom tablets, but the ones that come with other laptops, will work on this device. And like I said from the very beginning of the video, this is the good Wacom Pentec, at least the cleaner Pentec that is much better for drawing. And from a drawing perspective, that changes my entire opinion compared to the Easel 3. Let's talk about the pros and cons. The main pro is the convenience factor. That hinge makes it super easy to just pull down and draw without having to flip the whole device around. Sometimes these gimmicks, they just don't work out, but here it does. It's also a beefier laptop with a graphics card in it. A lot of these two-in-ones are really built for lightweight, speed, portability. That makes them great for art, but if you wanna use them for other things like 3D work or gaming or anything like that, nah, not so much. Whereas this one excels in that category. And then of course the pen and the quality of the pen and the smoothness of the lines and all that fun stuff, gotta throw that in the pros category as well. The biggest con is the price. You want the ultimate Windows drawing experience? Well, here you go. It now exists, but man, do you have to pay for it? This is really gonna appeal to some people, but you don't need a machine this powerful to make great art. In fact, most art and drawing applications don't need this much. So if you're looking at the price and you're completely terrified at this point, I, I totally understand you don't need a $2,500 machine to do this. It's a fantastic form factor. It's a fantastic machine, but it might be too much for many illustrators. So what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.